I suppose when I was younger, I was more of a little nerdy kid. You know, I was really into studies. I was really good at it. So I felt like I pushed through. You know, I pushed hard. You know, I took two gap years. You know, one was after my secondary school because in my first attempt, I didn't manage to get into university. You know, and that's when you start hearing the chatter in the family like, oh, maybe he should start working now. You know, and a lot of people do start doing that. Um, but I kind of pushed through because I was really passionate about my studies. And I was like, if finances are an issue, I would support myself. So what I did was I was um, going to school during the morning till afternoon. And from afternoon to evening, I was working in FNB. Um, and that's how I kind of pushed through um, and kind of broke that. I'm not sure if that would be appropriate to call it a glass ceiling, but kind of broke through, you know, what is expected to you, expected of you when you're in an immigrant family. But didn't you have to support your family? Um, oh. No, I mean, my father was working, um, which was... So you don't have to, because a lot of time, mm -hmm. I think, uh, so do you coffee. The thing is, we said that, oh, I, I, I left my study because I want to support my family. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, that's the real case. But yes. sometimes it's not. Um, even actually, yes. Um, when that is the case, it is very limiting to you as an individual because circumstances don't allow you to kind of like maybe pursue your studies or pursue your passion and career that you want to. Um, in my case, you know, I was fortunate enough that you know my father was supporting our family. Um, but at the same time, I feel like. I think you can relate to this. There is this expectation when you're coming from an Asian family or an immigrant family that, especially if you're a son, that you know once you're done with your studies, you kind of start supporting the family as soon as possible. You you know kind of lend a hand to your father and help you know uh, contribute to the family. So there is that pressure. Um, so I guess I was a little bit selfish. I didn't cave into that pressure and kind of keep pursuing. And I did study. I feel like for a long time. Um, because when I was doing my undergrad, when I was working in Zuma, uh, when I was doing my postgrad, a lot of my friends, a lot of my peers from secondary schools, uh, they have already started their careers. Yeah. A lot of them were like secondary school teachers. Um, they were earning really well, they had really good jobs, and I was still a student. Um, but I feel like now that when I look back, it's actually it was actually worth it. Because once again, I feel like we limit ourselves by thinking very short term. Yeah, yeah. which is not, uh, I get to learn really late because I, <clears throat> I realize once, we, sometimes yes, at dinner sometimes it's not a choice that we want to make, but mm -hmm. it's the circumstances that we push through to <coughs> the idea of early age working. And I, I think, man, in our community, especially even when I said Asian, mm -hmm. uh, we start working for since 18. Yeah. Probably sometimes 17. And our parents or our, 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 our society think that you start making from 18, by 30 you'll make a lot of money. But it's not true. Yeah. <laughs> it's not true. It's not true because sometimes I look back, my friends, they're mm -hmm. my um for my school time in Nepal. So probably they were still studying when I was working. Mm -hmm. And they were still studying. They will not make any money. Any, mm -hmm. but when they finish the studying, their growth goes mm -hmm. faster. Yeah, I mean, I was given this temptation actually. Um, I'm not sure if I have mentioned this to you. Uh, so when I was working in Zuma, yeah, 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 and I was planning on leaving to do my masters because I've saved up enough. Uh, one of the deputy GM, I think, so he was going somewhere else, and he asked me if he would. Um, if I would join him in yeah, his new yeah, place. Yeah, I think you told me that. That's and, why yeah. you survived, man. <laughs> and yes, he offered me a very lucrative salary. Yeah, like yeah. during that time, he was saying like, oh, around 20K. But as a student who just freshly graduated, okay, 15K, not a lot of money. 20K was a lot of money. It was more than what my father was making. You know, so there was that back in, oh, 20K is a lot of money. I'm earning more than my father, so that's definitely good. I can support my family. Like, I can just stay in F&B instead of, you know, Amen. do my master's, you know. But I don't know what came to my head. I fortunately said no to that. Because, yes, I did another year of, you know, master's, another year of studies. Um, 
earning money a lot later than a lot of my peers. But the moment I start making money now, I am earning a lot more. I can say easily double to what I would have been earning if I stayed in F&B. I think also um, the money is is a, is a, is a thing, mm -hmm. but <coughs> what you are doing is is a good thing for uh, for for our community or society that I think there is I can proudly say that I know a person mm -hmm. who's uh, who have same name as me mm -hmm. and who is actually teaching in 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 HQU. Right? That's also the okay, you know the money will follow something mm -hmm. and you become something yeah. but these are the things that we need to actually mm -hmm. get away from stereotype of our uh, our community that what we do, we do work in this industry, we work in this industry, right. that's the limitation that we mm -hmm, do, mm -hmm. and more than that is actually, n it's not, I mean, not impossible, right. but you need person to, to see, like, you know, to make example of, right, like, we know, we know, I'm sure you have some friends and family which you also be pretty proud of to see you yeah. going to HQU, teaching these people, mm -hmm. and you, you, over there, you know, it's just a door open for a, for the younger generation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. think so. I think you can almost compare this to investment, right? Yeah. Like, if you're looking short term, yes, you're doing a job, you get paid <coughs> monthly. So that's immediate, right? That's very immediate gratification. But, um, you know, like education, I would say it's almost like investment. In the short term, you see nothing. You're spending a lot of money, you're not getting much in return. But in the long run, it actually pays off. You get a better life. Um, you get yeah better social status. You get uh, more stability. You know you're able to support your family better. And um, like you said, you know kind of set a good precedent, uh, set a good example for the younger generation as well. You know, in my family, I would say I was the first person to have finished um, you know uh, a university degree from one of the official universities in Hong Kong and actually finished a master's degree as well and also the first um, to be a lecturer. So I feel like that does somehow inspire because now that I look at my younger cousins, yeah. you know, once they see, all right, actually this is possible, uh, their parents know this is possible. You know, I would often get calls from uncles and aunties asking me for advice. You know, obviously the kids, the younger people, they work hard themselves, you know, they put in the effort, but you know, it opens up this possibility that, oh, actually I can also do this it becomes a choice for them. So I would get calls from uncles and aunties asking for advice, like, oh, what should they do? How should they apply for university? Is it worth it? So I would kind of give these general advices and yeah, kind of like, you're kind of forming a new path for, you know, people like us, I would say.